So now we are going to venture into the weak acid and base situations. We looked at strong acids and bases, and the nice thing about our six strong acids and six strong bases, it's very easy to find ion concentrations. So if I have a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution, that means my hydronium concentration is 0.1 molar. And of course, I can use Kw in an effort to find hydroxide. And so remembering that Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, and hydronium hy times hydroxide will always equal that, I can easily find the hydroxide for that hydrochloric acid solution. And vice versa, sodium hydroxide, hydroxide is 0.1 molar, hydronium 1 times 10 to the negative 13th. You just have to be careful, like if we had, let's say, calcium hydroxide, remember that my hydroxide concentration would be 0.2 molar because of the fact that there are two hydroxides present. All right, so if the solution was 0.1 molar, the hydroxide concentration would be 0.2. Anyway, reactions with water do not go to completion as far as our weak acids and bases are concerned. So in order to find our ion concentrations, we need to know an equilibrium constant and solve an equilibrium problem. Ice, ice, baby. So let's look at this. First up, acid ionization dissociation is when an acid reacts with water, and of course we're going to make hydronium and a conjugate base, a Bronsted-Lowry situation here. If I write my Kc expression, products over reactants, I get that, but again, typically we don't use water in the equilibrium, basically because it's constant. So if I get rid of the water and bring it up to the Kc side, I see that this is going to be called what we call Ka. Okay, the weak acid ion dissociation constant. And these Ka's are determined experimentally, either by measuring conductivity to find out the degree of ionization of our weak acid, or by finding pH. The nice thing is these Ka's are, let me skip ahead a little, easy to find, they're in tables, they're given to you on the AP exam. But it is possible to actually calculate a Ka. So for example here, I have lactic acid that is found in sour milk, but other places as well. Obviously, you might have heard when we exercise, muscles produce lactic acid. But if I have a 0 .02, 0 0.025 molar solution of lactic acid, it has a pH of 2.75, what I would like to know is what is the Ka for this acid? And what's the degree of ionization? So you see I have an equilibrium set up and ready to do an ice table. So my lactic acid will donate a hydrogen to water. It will produce hydronium. All right, and that's, of course, because we are talking about an acid here. Initially, 0.025 molar, and my products, I will say, are zero. Even though there's a minimal amount of hydronium in neutral water anyway, we know 10 to the negative 7th but it's negligible, but so we say it's zero. So at equilibrium, you can see we have 0.025 minus X for my lactic acid, and then X is for hydronium and the lactate ion. Somehow I would love to find X, all right, because my Ka expression would be X squared products over 0.025 minus X reactants. The link, pH. I know that I have a pH of 2.75. Hopefully remember that 10 to the negative pH gives me hydronium, and that would give me X. So I just have to do 10 to the negative 2.75. That tells me the concentration of hydronium, which of course tells me X. Now it becomes plug and chug, and I plug away into my expression. So Ka is 0 0.0178 squared over 0 0.025 minus that. And so eventually I get an answer that X is equal to, or I'm sorry, Ka is equal to 1.37 times 10 to the negative fourth. Of course, remembering what our K means, that means our reactants would be favored. This, our weak acids and bases do not dissociate very much. So we expect small K values. What is the actual degree of ionization? 
Well, what that means is how much of the acid dissociated. Sorry, go back up. We started with the fact that lactic acid was at 0.025 molar. And it dissociated this much, x. So all we have to do is take x, divide it by our original concentration, and when you do that, you get the degree of ionization. It could be left in decimal form or just multiply by 100 and get a percent. So this lactic acid dissociated 7.12%. Again, the Ka values are easy to find in textbooks, online, etc. So you probably don't have to calculate Ka's on the AP exam per se, but it is an important part of first year chemistry, and you'll have to do it on your quick checks and tests for me. Haha. <laughs> Base, same thing going on. A weak base reacts with water. It um, accepts the hydrogen, so we form hydroxide. And so we have, ultimately, a Kb expression, which is just Kc. And that water, again, is constant, so it's just kind of blended in with the Kc to make Kb. And we do problems the exact same way as we just did with the acid, except if we when we have to deal with pH and stuff, or if they would tell us a pH, we'd have to make sure we switch to pOH because we have hydroxide in our equilibrium. And again, KBs can be found in books online, and they would be given to you on the AP exam. So calculating Ka or Kb, not as important as doing calculations with them, since we can easily obtain them. When you know the K, A, or B, you can be asked to find hydronium, hydroxide concentration, the concentration of the acid or your conjugate base, concentration of the base or the conjugate acid. You can find the degree of ionization and pH. I know you're overjoyed right now. Pause the video. Relax. Haha. <laughs> They're all just equilibrium problems used in our ice tables. You may need to use the quadratic, okay? But again, we've already done a bunch of those, and it's not as popular on the AP exam. So I think I have you do one more quadratic in a practice situation. But as it says there, since our dissociations are so small with our weak acids and bases, we can oftentimes assume that we don't need to use the quadratic. And how do you do this? How do you check if your original concentration of your acid or base divided by your Ka or Kb is less than 100, or I'm sorry, greater than 100, then no quadratic would be needed. Because plugging into that x value, it's not going to affect our answer when we use sig figs. And so again, greater than 100, that typically means you know, you're dividing by 10 to the negative 3 or something. And most of our k values are smaller than that. And I'll show you how this works here. So nicotinic acid, niacin. What are the concentrations of this acid, hydronium, and the nicotinate ion in a solution that is 0.1 molar nicotinic acid at, of course, our magical number of 25 degrees Celsius? Remember, our K values are very temperature sensitive, so that's why even when you look at, I meant to show you that, on your Ka tables, you can see there you know, at 25 degrees Celsius because they are so temperature dependent. So going back to our problem, sorry, okay. So I also want to know the pH and the degree of ionization. So bam, all of that information. Now some of our weak acids and bases have some complex uh, formulas, so we just usually abbreviate them. So like nicotinic acid, I will call HNIC, and the nicotinate ion I would call NIC without the H, NIC minus. Just makes it easier to write our equilibrium expressions. So nicotinic acid HNIC plus water makes our hydronium and the nicotinate ion. We are set up for an ice table. Pause the video for a second, set it up, see how you do. Hopefully this is what you got, and so at equilibrium, 0.1 minus x for nicotinic acid, 
XX for hydronium and nicotinate. So when we look at our Ka expression, it looks like we're going to have to do quadratic. But my original concentration, 0.1 molar, divided by the Ka is greater than 100. It's 7,143. That means we don't have to do the quadratic. And what that helps us so much with is says we just ignore this minus x because whatever x turns out to be, 0.1 minus it is going to end up being 0.1 with our sig figs. So now we just have Ka equals x squared over 0.1, and that is my Ka value. Let's plug and chug, solve for x. X is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the negative third molar. So X takes care of hydronium concentration and my nicotinic acid, sorry, nicotinate ion concentration. And my H nick is simply just going to stay at 0.1 molar. We also wanted to know the pH and the degree of ionization. Well, since we know hydronium, pH is simply going to be the negative log of that. 2.92. We expect that. It's an acid, so I do expect uh, an answer lower than 7. Degree of ionization, again, is just the original concentration on the bottom, x on the top, so 1.2 times 10 to the negative third, or 0 0.0012. And so my degree of ionization is 0 0.012, or as a percent, 1.2%. All right, so we'll have lots of fun practicing this. And again, I think there's one where I make you use the quadratic, but almost always you'll be able to get rid of that negative x and avoid the quadratic situation. Here's one more with our base. Okay, morphine. A lot of our bases are end in I-N-E. They're amines with a nitrogen. And, of course, you may have heard of that administered medically to relieve pain. I want to know the pH of a 0.0075 molar solution of morphine at my magic 25 degrees Celsius. I'm given the Kb, and then I also want to know the hydronium. Pause the video, see if you can get this one, and come back and check your answer. This is what your ice table should have looked like, and just checking again, we don't have to use the quadratic, which of course happily gets rid of the minus x. And now we just go into plug chug mode. My KB is equal to x squared over 0 0.0075. My x is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. But remember, this is hydroxide. So the question asked, what's the pH and what is the concentration of hydronium? So you can immediately find hydronium now using KW and then do the negative law and find pH. But either way, hopefully you find pH of 10.04, which we expect, basic, and my hydronium 9.12 times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, so either find pOH, find pH, find hydronium, or immediately find hydronium, then find pH. Whatever works best for you. Last thing here, we do have some weak polyprotic acids, carbonic and phosphoric, probably the most common. And just to, when you look at the data tables, you'll typically see they have more than one Ka. The first Ka is for removing the first hydrogen. The second Ka is for removing the second hydrogen. Those are the expressions. And if you look on the chart, you will find that the first Ka tends to have a smaller Ka, I'm sorry, a larger Ka, 10 to the negative 7, compared to the next one, 10 to the negative 11. And what that means, and it should make sense, the first hydrogen, school's over, <laughs> the first hydrogen is lost much more easily than the second. So if you look at the Ka values of phosphoric acid, you will notice that the first Ka is the largest, then the second, then the third. Again, you can look at a, a nicer, bigger table of it, but if you look at my slide here, phosphoric acid, you can see that represented there. I think I'm a little off on that circle, sorry. But again, when we have weak polyprotic acids, the hydrogens are easier to remove from the start. All right, enjoy all of the fun problems, and I will catch up with you soon.